All right, um, we're doing pages 132 to 136 in your workbook. Um, this is about systems of equations. And we start off with an example. And the example has to do with one equation for cost, one equation for revenue. Now, this is important in real life because if you want to run a business, you want your amount of money you make, which is called your revenue, to be more than the amount of money you spend, which is called your cost. And if you, if your revenue is greater than your cost, then you have a profit. So what you make minus what you spend equals your profit. So that's what this problem is about. So we have an equation for cost and an equation for revenue where x equals the number of nights x is the number of nights. So the more nights that you operate as a bed and breakfast, the more money you make and the more money you spend, right? This table at the bottom of page 132 illustrates how that's true. As the number of nights is zero, you make zero dollars. And you spend $600 because you spend $600, I guess, just when you open the business. Oh, just to prepare the bedroom. But then, each night, you spend an additional 15. So after one night, it'll be 6.15. After two nights, it'll be 6.30. After three nights, it'll be 6.45. Hey, what kind of sequence is this? I hope you said arithmetic. Meanwhile, your revenue is going up $75 a night. So $75, to $150, $225. You can do this with your calculator. You're just plugging this number into this equation, right? 75 times 3 is 225. 75 times 4 is 300. And up here, I was just plugging it into this equation, 15x plus 600. Now, I would ask you to do the rest of uh, A on your own, but the next question says, how many nights would you have to rent it before you, uh, at which point you break even? Break even is where revenue minus cost equals zero. So right now, all these, we're spending more than we make, right? The costs are bigger than the revenue, but it's getting closer. So eventually, um, let's say I'm going to skip to 10. 10 times 75 is 750. And the cost uh, at that point will also be 750, 600 plus 10 times 15. So that's how many nights, that's my answer for 2B on page 133. How many nights does it, do we have to rent the bedroom to break even? 10 nights. So that, by that time it's 750. And then it asks us to graph this here. Uh, I'm not going to do that right now. Well, sure I will. Sure I will. So here's my, here's my graph right here. Uh, you can see the way they've got it labeled, 750 takes about the same amount of squares as 1. So my slope of 75 on this just looks like a slope of 1 because on, the, on this thing, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, but for every 1 over, I go 75 up. So it's just, uh, that's my, the way my scale is. And that's my revenue. My cost, though, is going to start here at 600. Remember, it, has, it starts at 600 even if I spend no money. And then I go up 15 every night, so I'm going, it's not going to have as steep of a slope, so it'll be something like that. And here's where I break even at 10, 750. That means 10 nights and $750 spent at my break even point. So I just answered. Uh, with this, I answered 2C for you, and I answered 2D. I explained it. It's, and it's the same point as it says, what's the, how does this compare to the break even point in part B? It's the same one. And um, I might let you write your own words for number three. Okay, and, and number four, I'm going to have you skip. So skip numbers four, A, B, and C down here, um, and move straight into the next page, page 134. So it says, in your own words, write the meaning of each vocabulary term, system of linear equations, um, and the solution of a system. Um, an example of a system of linear equations would be the two equations 
like up there on the board, not there, there, or the first system we looked at, the one where we had, we had a C equals 600, or C equals, um, this is a system, C equals 600 plus 15x, and R equals 750x. That was a system, and then its solution was the points that we found up on the, uh, where the graph, where they intersected. So the points 10, 750. And it was on the table there also. That was a solution to a system. Um, okay, and then moving on to page 135. The idea with the system is you have two equations, and there's only one point where both the equations are true. There's only one point where they're both true. So now uh, we're going to do page 135 and see if you can do some of those. Uh, find the point. They're going to give you a point, and you're going to check them on the equations and see if they make them, if it's the solution. So I'll show you how that works. Okay. Um, on page 135 now, uh, they give you the point 3, 1 and say, is it a solution to the system of equations? Well, it makes the first equation true, right? If I plug in 3 plus 1 equals 4, yeah. How about if I have the second equation? 2 times 3 minus 1 equals 3. 6 minus 1? No, it's not. So the answer is no. Or it's not a solution. Um, to be a solution, you have to, it has to work on both. It doesn't work on both, it's not a solution to the system. Um, for number two, same thing, x, plug in 1, 3 to this, 1 minus 3 equals negative 2, question mark? Yes, that's true. How about if I plug it in here, 2 times 1 plus 3 equals 5. 2 plus 3 equals 5. I don't know if you can see the green on the board here very well. I hope you can. But it's telling me that, yes, this one is a solution. It solves both equations. So, yes, 1, 3 is a solution of this system. Yes. All right, you guys can do 3 through 6 on your own, and then I'll see if I can help you with 7. All right, this is up close. But here, number 7, it says use the graph to find the solution. So, um... The, the solution is where the lines intersect. So for number 7, it looks like x would be positive 2 and y would be negative 2. So 2 comma negative 2. For 8, we'd have x is negative 1 and y is negative 3. And for 9, we would have x is 4 and y is 2. Now it says check your solution. So We'll do that. Let's try that. Okay. Um, so we got our uh, number seven up there, um, and then we put our answer. We thought, thought it was two negative two, and we thought our answer for eight was negative one, negative three. So uh, we'll first try number seven. We're going to plug this point in for this point two negative two in for these numbers. So. Make sure this is x and this is y, so we go 3 times 2 minus 2 times negative 2 equals 10. And that's 6 minus negative 4 equals 10. And that just means 6 plus 4 equals 10, so that's right. And then does 2 plus negative 2 equals 0? Yeah, that does, so this one's right. So you checked it and it works. Yes. And then uh, this one, negative 1, negative 3, so we plug in negative 1 for x minus 2 times negative 3 for y equals 5. So 1 minus negative 1 minus negative 6 equals 5. So let's say negative 1 plus 6 equals 5. That's right. Yeah. And then 2 times negative 1 plus negative 3 equals negative 5, negative 2 Minus 3 equals negative 5. Yeah, that's true. So that's how a check looks. You can check number 9 on your own. Finally, by now we're at page 136. We've still got 5 minutes left. These videos are only allowed to be uh, 15 minutes long. Ooh, some problems for you to do for homework. Right? Page 136. I'll see if I can help you with any of them. All right, uh, so this, this last page is asking you to graph, solve by graphing. 
So if you can get through 15, we can do 16 as a bonus test question on Thursday. But how do you graph these? Well, write down y equals what slope intercept form? mx plus b. All right. So this first equation, there's two equations, two different equations. The first one has a slope of negative 1 and a y-intercept of 3. So we go to the y-intercept. We find the 3. And then the slope is negative 1. So I go down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1. I have to be very careful because my answer could be anywhere on this graph. So I don't want to just be wildly putting my points up. I want to be very careful about it. Um, there, now I graph the first equation. It's equation 1. And then the second equation, now this one has an intercept of 5, and it's going up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, but it's going off the graph. My solution is not going to be there. It's going to be right here, right? Down 1 over 1. But see how I had to actually count it, because this tells me my answer, but also I have to use my head, because you know, I'm, I'm not using precise instruments here, so I use my head. This point I know is 0, 0,5. I know that's on the line because it's the y-intercept. But then I, and then I have to remember I went this way one and that way one, you know, because of my slope. Uh, I can go, it's a positive slope, but so when I go down on this side, I go down this way, and the two negatives cancel out. So this is still positive slope. And this point now I can figure out is negative 1, 4. I hope you guys got that. And that would be my answer. So my answer is negative 1, 4. I should check it, but I know that um, you're getting tired. You know, I'm going to check it. It's the last thing I'm going to do. I'll let you do the rest of these on your own. So uh, I'm checking negative 1, 4. First, I'll check it into y equals negative x plus 3. So I'll say 4 equals negative negative 1 plus 3. Well, that just means 1 plus 3, right? That, that's, that's correct. 4 equals 1 plus 3. And then if I try y equals x plus 5, I go 4 equals negative 1 plus 5. Well, that's true, too. 5 minus 1 is 4. That's, that's right. Systems of equations, welcome to the wonderful world. Wonderful world of systems of equations. I hope you do an exemplary job. Don't make a fiasco out of it. I'll see you tomorrow.